Konnichiwa. This is the, the Shogunstein. And uh, before it was the Shogunstein, it was uh, it's Leonard. And a uh, long time ago, in a uh, galaxy far, far away, when I was a uh, teacher in New York City, I had a uh, buddy who was a teacher in Brooklyn. Uh, we'll call him Big Scott, because his name was Scott, and he was a pretty tall, big guy. And uh, we went and saw Tony Horowitz at a uh, Barnes & Noble in uh, New York City. And he signed what's still one of my favorite books of all time, Confederates in the Attic, Dispatches from the Unfinished Civil War. There you go. To Leonard Fondly Tony Horowitz. And some of you may or may not know that a couple days ago, while on a book tour for his newest book, Spying on the South, which is about the guy who created Central Park, and he took a trip across the uh, South before the Civil War. During this book tour, uh, Tony Horowitz uh, passed away. And uh, it's a tremendous loss. He was a terrific writer, and he wrote some of my favorite books of all time, Confederates in the Attic, being uh, probably one of my top five favorite books ever. And I remember when we got our, our book signed, we're like, me and Big Scott, like, hey, Tony, where are your fans? Confederates in the Attic. Um, on the cover here, you'll see a guy. This is not a guy from the Civil War. It's actually a reenactor. And this is a guy whose uh, job in many documentaries was to be a bloated corpse in, like, History Channel uh, battlefield documentaries. And that was the type of person that Tony Horowitz would find while writing his books and, and interview. Confederates in the Attic was a look at, um, and this was written in the, the mid-1990s, so some of it, you know, I'm sure uh, may be, be different if you went to the South in, in 2018, 2019, and that's some of the things we're going to see in this new book, which I haven't read yet. But it was a look at people's view and the legacy of the, the Civil War. And it's just a wonderful book, and he would just talk to ordinary people, people like this guy who was a bloated corpse reenactor. And he would uh, get their views on the Civil War and its legacy and uh, use that for what he called participatory history, where he combined history with sort of like uh, like travel essay. Uh, there used to be a genre, I'm not sure if it's still around today because of the internet, but there used to be a genre of books called travel narratives, which were, you know, people's, you know, uh, firsthand accounts of like their trip to, to China or their trip to, to wherever. So what Tony Horowitz did in Confederates in the Attic is he created this uh, combo genre where he combined history and travelogue and Confederates in the Attic was the, the first example of this. And it's just a wonderful book with many different uh, stories about uh, people today. Well, at least people in the mid-1990s and he combined, that he met. And he combined it with Civil War history. And I'll never forget the story of the guy with the, the bloated corpse. He, uh, when he went to Georgia, he talked to people who were uh, reenactors from like Gone with the, the Wind type, uh, uh, you know, actors, you know, uh, plantation reenactors. And then there was also in here with, with uh, the, in Virginia, there was an excellent uh, chapter on uh, the Arthur Ashe statue and, and that controversy. Uh, one of the stories in here was of uh, a guy who put a Confederate flag on his car and he drove through an African-American neighborhood and I, I think he, he got shot or, 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 or beat up and then there was about that trial. So it was those kinds of, of stories uh, of the current legacy. One of the more mem Another memorable chapter in here was a uh, teacher, I think it was somewhere in the, the South, maybe Atlanta, who uh, taught uh, that Abraham Lincoln was a horrible person. And uh, it was about uh, why a person would teach that Abraham Lincoln was, was terrible. But it was all these unique, interesting people from today that he would meet, and then he would combine it with the, the history. 
Um, one of the, I, I think maybe one of the best things in this book was when he went with this this guy, the the bloated corpse guy, and they did a reenactment of of Pickett's charge, and they read primary sources and they walked uh, the the battlefield there in, in Gettysburg. So Confederates in the attic, dispatches from the unfinished Civil War, amazing book, still very relevant today with some of the things going on. Can't recommend this book uh, enough. Fantastic book. And uh, if Tony Horowitz had, had just written this book, that would be legacy enough. But he's done some other things too. Prior to Confederates in the Attic, he wrote a, a book about his experiences in the Middle East, especially Iraq, before the uh, first Gulf War. And again, a combination of history and travel essay. Uh, one of the best things in here was a chapter on totalitarianism in Iraq and just how the cult of personality of Saddam was prior to the first Gulf War. Here we go to Leonard. See again, it's Leonard, a uh, man of the world. Once upon a time before uh, moving idea to the desert southwest, the, the Shogunstein used to be quite the, the traveler. So Baghdad without a map, this one might be a little dated, but a uh, good look at uh, the Middle East, at least in the, the late 1980s, before the first Gulf War. And very similar to Confederates in the Attic, another combination, history, travel essay, another amazing book, Blue Latitudes, which was the story of Captain Cook, and in general of the Age of Exploration, uh, again, combined with... Um, uh, travel narrative and just some amazing people like there was this Australian guy that was sort of his sidekick when they they did some traveling and then there was another chapter in here where he went to some island in the middle of the Pacific in the middle of nowhere that Cook had gone and uh, Hara was trying to interview the, the king of that island and the king of that island had actually read Confederates in the Attic and had just wanted to talk about the uh, the Confederate submarine the the Hunley. Amazing book, uh, Blue Latitudes, and this is the where he was doing his book tour when me and Big Scott got our, our autographs. So Tony Horowitz, Blue Latitudes, so you get history of like Hawaii, because Captain Cook ended up getting cooked in, in Hawaii, uh, discovery of, uh, at least the European discovery of places like Australia and a lot of these islands in the, the Pacific. Wonderful book combination again of meeting interesting people and history blue latitudes i don't have here because it's actually in my classroom another book that he wrote was called voyage long and strange similar travel narrative history and it was a look at what happened in the americas between columbus landing in 1492 and the settlement of jamestown excellent history of what was going on with the exploration of the uh, Spanish and uh, some Viking history and even uh, a little bit of, of Jamestown because that's where the book uh, gets up to the Jamestown uh, colony, Roanoke. And that is a voyage long and strange. Uh, great stuff on Columbus. One of the best histories of Columbus that I've read combined with him going down to the Dominican Republic to try and find where Columbus may have been buried. And again, I don't have that here. It's sitting in my classroom. That's a voyage long and strange. The only Tony Horowitz book that I was not a huge fan of was his history of John Brown and the Harper's Ferry Raid called Midnight Rising. Why didn't I like this book so much? Well, it's just a, a flat-out history book, and it didn't have the participatory history of actually sailing like in Blue Latitudes or, you know, in, in Voyage Long and Strange, where he dressed up as a conquistador and marched through the, the hot weather in, in Florida or like in Confederate City Addict, you know, going uh, onto the actual battlefields. Midnight Rising, you know, had he not written these other books, would probably be a pretty decent history of uh, John Brown. It just was missing all the uh, uh, participatory history in the travel narrative. 
So his last book, which I just picked up, right, uh, and again, he was doing this book tour when he passed away, Spying on the South, which is Tony Horowitz back to his participatory history form where he's retracing the steps of Frederick uh, Law Olmsted of Central Park fame and his uh, travels throughout the American South prior to the American Civil War. So Tony Horowitz, rest in peace. You're an amazing author. You wrote some amazing books. Uh, I'll give a full review on Spying on the South when I'm done reading it. Midnight Rising, there's certainly good parts to it, uh, but it's just a, a regular standard history, not, not what made Tony Horowitz Tony Horowitz. So an important story in American history, but not one of my favorite books. But the ones I really recommend, Blue Latitudes, uh, Voyage Long and Strange, which I don't have here, and Confederates in the Attic. Tony Horowitz, rest in peace. Uh, you were a great author. We'll, we'll, we'll miss you, but uh, you wrote some good stuff. That'll be here for a long time, and I highly recommend you guys check it out. Shogunstein out.